which have worked hard and trained day after day to get to the point where they are. Tonight you are going to get to hear those stories as well as ask some questions that not everybody gets to on a day-to-day -day basis. To my right here we have professional player Justin Wong. He's been doing this for a number of years. He actually took second in two different games at EVO this year, 2013. On my other hand here, I have Jacob Happy Medicine Davis, who is, uh, I wouldn't say something of a rookie, but he's, he's on a shooting star to the fast track. He's catching up with his other one pretty quick, if not already there, actually. Both of them are exceptionally talented, and we are very, very pleased to have them. Um, if I can get a round of applause, we will start. How's everyone doing today? Everyone doing good? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So pretty much, uh, my name is Justin Wong, and um, I've been playing fighting games for over 15 years. And I want to say that I never meant to be a pro gamer. It just happened. You know, I was growing up because growing up playing the game because I enjoyed playing the game. I had a Super Nintendo. They gave me this hyper fighting game, and I was a psycho pressure scrub. You know, what <laughs> I mean, holding back two seconds for a punch. Try to beat the game like that. It didn't work that well, but eventually enough continues and let me win. Um, I think my first experience was going to the, my local arcade in New York, Chinatown Fair. A lot of people know from the past because it's a very popular arcade for like Mars, Capcom 2, CBS 2, Third Strike, and pretty much all the Capcom games. And like I was really, really bad. I was a, a masher. I didn't know how to throw fireballs, dragon punches, and you know, it's just I lost like all my lunch money when I was like 14 or 13 at the time. But I just wanted to get better because, you know, like all my, my, my friends from school just make fun of me. Ha, oh, you can't do like the shin show, you can motion and stuff like that because like that was like the popular thing back in the day. So I spent like a whole summer just like making sure I don't mash anymore, making sure I'm able to do fireball motions. And I started out very slow from the quarter circle forward, like just doing it very slow, hopefully it comes out. And this is on janky machines in a local candy store called Raul's Candy Store. So I, I, I had to stay like in like like you what people say the scrub section before I went to the big boys, right? Um, eventually I came back and I was playing and I was playing a lot better. And I went to the arcade every morning at 10 a.m. to play against the computer because when people come, I'm not gonna play because they're just gonna beat me. So that that was how like I, that's that's how, how bad I, I thought I was. And then one day there was a lot of people outside the arcade at 10 a.m. and I was like, wow, this is a surprise. I guess I'm not going to play today. I'll just watch. And they were telling me, oh, we're going to a tournament called ECC5, which is East Coast Championship 5. And I'm like, oh, I don't know what that is, but what is it? Because they explained to me it's a tournament and a lot of people around like the United States will be there. And I said, oh, that's cool, you know. And they said, do you want to come along? And I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll go along because I want to see these, these players play and how, how they are. So I go there and they convinced me to enter, and I didn't want to enter at first. So I entered Marvel's Capcom 1 and Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. And there was like, I want to say 300 competitors, and I got fifth place on both games actually. And the, the funny thing is, the people that I lost to are people from my arcade. I lost to Eddie Lee and Arturo Sanchez. So now, it, to me, I, I thought to myself, okay, maybe I don't suck. I just, I just, you know, the players in my arcade are just better, but I'm able to defend myself against the players around like Maryland, Virginia, New Jersey, and so forth and so forth. So that's when Mars Capcom 2 came out, and I told Eddie Lee that I would never lose in this game. That would be the best. And I took it to heart, and I played so much that, like, um, I know, like, this is when the the characters came out depending on how many credits you put in the machine. So obviously there was a default, maybe 20 characters, and there's so many question marks around the screen. You know, my first team was Hayato, Strider, Psylocke. Really bad team. <laughs> and uh, eventually all the characters got came out. There's uh, Strider, Doom, Cable, Storm, Sentinel, Magneto, they all came out. And eventually everyone started picking those characters. And I just picked up just Magneto, Cable, Campy. Because I like Cammy and Manuel Cable are just really good characters. And I went to uh, my first first tournament again, like in Marvel's Capcom 2, called uh, NEC 1. The first one from Big E that I, people might know of when he won Summer Jam with the NEC series. And 
this is when Eddie Lee retired because uh, there was a guy in Philly named Julian Robinson. He retired Eddie Lee, and Eddie's like, I'm not playing anymore. Maybe I'm too old. So I went there, and it's magically I won the tournament. And then Arturo, he likes to exaggerate, goes on SRK and says, Justin Wong will never lose a tournament. He's the best. And blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, here we go. <laughs> you know? And this is when the SRK forms were really bad. <laughs> and ECC 6 came. And, you know, I just I was just playing for fun still. And they did make, they made this whole big deal out of, oh, Ricky Ortiz, you know, he's coming from California. You have to defend our title, Justin. And blah, blah, blah. And to me, I just wanted to play. I, like, I didn't care about, like, winning. I didn't care about, like, just anything. I just wanted to just play and just get better and how to improve. So I was able to beat Ricky. And then I guess that's when it, it just kind of happened where, like, okay, now since you beat Ricky, you have to beat Alex Valle. And I'm like, why do I have to beat so many people? Why can't I just play the game? <laughs> so then I go to Midwest Championships hosted by Jason Wilson at uh, Chicago. And um, at the, I, I got to the finals and I played Valle and I beat him. And then now I'm like, okay, now you're like the favorite to win B5. This, this is called Battle of the Bay. Before it was called Evolution Series. And you have to beat the defending champion of B4, which was Duck Doe. And I'm like, okay. So now, I don't know anything about flying. I drove to Chicago. Like, I went on a Greyhound bus. Like, and, and this is when I'm telling my parents, oh yeah, I'm going to stay at my friend's house in New Jersey, just chilling, you know? <laughs> I'm not going anywhere far, don't worry about it. And, and um, my uncle actually bought me my plane ticket to California, because I told him, oh, I'm gonna go visit a friend. So I, I, was, I flew by myself when I was 14 years old, and I'm like, this is kind of scary. So, um, the skunk picked me up from the airport and you know, he took me to the, the tournament and that's when B5 started. And it was a very different atmosphere because there were so many more players and you know, I can't believe I met people from different countries like Japan was there, um, like Mexico, like, like everywhere, Europe, everywhere around the world. And I'm like, wow, this is really cool. So I get into the finals and actually the finals is actually very close. And I, and I uh, will beat Duck, and they're like, oh, you became the Marvelous Capcom 2 World Champion. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. You know, <laughs> I, I really didn't think too much about it. Like, I was still young at the time. You know, this is when, like, um, you know, you just want to hang out with your friends in school, and then this is, like, something that I just do for fun. And eventually, it just, I just kept going to more tournaments, just because I, it was very fun hanging out with new people, meeting new people, you know, like, this networking with them, talk, and then able to talk to them online when I get home, and like, hey, you know, that was a fun trip, I hope I can come back next year and see you guys again. And it just kind of just went that way for like, for like 10 years. Obviously the scene grew just a lot more because of Street Fighter 4 and everything. And I think because of Street Fighter 4 is the reason why the scene is like so big now, because now you have players that used to play FPS or players that played like the Smash Brothers games or the 3D games and they're all coming together and it's just like more companies are just trying to get involved now and it, I think because of that it just it just kind of like made everyone want to be like I want to when I grow up I want to become a pro gamer but it just magically happened for me like I didn't plan to become a pro gamer and I think that's the best way to I want to say approach it because you don't want to have the stress be like, I hope if I do good this tournament, maybe a, a potential sponsor will look at me. You just want to just go and have fun and just do your best. And um, I think that's what I did, and that's how I got to where I am right now, is by just having fun, hanging out with my friends, playing at my best, and making sure that like, you know, everyone just has a very good fun time. And, and that's why like a lot of the companies now, they're looking for players like that. They don't want to look for players to stress themselves out, and, and because if you stress yourself out, you're gonna play worse. And there's a lot of players that kind of that do that. Um, I don't want to put any on blast, but I mean, most people can guess who they are and stuff like that. But I think that's like my best advice for people that just want to be part of the scene or just want to be bigger and just like potentially just play and play what you do, because anyone that can travel and play video games, I think that's a very dream job, and it's something that no one should take for granted and just appreciate it.
But yeah, that is the story of my life. <laughs>